Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at the question of what is a seamless repeating pattern and why your documents may not repeat correctly. So we're looking at the basics of what is a seamless repeating pattern and understanding that. I just happen to be using Illustrator as my example space. Before we begin, however, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine is better. I also have Illustrator training at Udemy.com, and there's a referral link for each one of my classes there in the description below. Please feel free to share these links with family and friends. Let's swing back to Illustrator and here in Illustrator on this artboard I have two things. One, I have a seamless repeating pattern swatch and here I have a shape that is filled with the pattern. So let me just set this shape back to its defaults. I'm going to disable the stroke on the shape. I'm going to target the fill. I'm going up here to my swatches panel where I have my seamless repeating pattern swatch. I'll click once and my shape is now filled with this swatch. Now it's a little bit on the small side so I chose object, transform scale. I turned off transform objects and I'm going to take the size of the pattern up a bit. Let's try something like 150%. That's pretty good, shows us the pattern really clearly. So let's use these two elements to answer the question as to what is a seamless repeating pattern swatch because there's only one of them here and that's this one here. And you can tell if something is a seamless repeating pattern swatch by doing this. You're going to select over the shape and you're going to make two duplicates of it. So I'll hold the Alt or Option key and drag two copies of this shape away. And I'm going to position them so that they are lined up with each other. This one I'm going to position along the base of this original design. And this one I'm going to line up along this side. So I'm just making sure that they line up perfectly and when they line up perfectly you'll see that there are no visible seams here. This looks seamless. It looks as if this is an entire wave shape even though it's split into lots of different pieces and this piece is movable. And here it's also seamless. You can't see the line between what was the original pattern swatch and this swatch element here. So when I drag it away, you can see that this is two different pieces. When I put it back, you can't see the line between them. So let's just go and discard the extras that we have there. And let's go and see if we can do the same thing with this piece here. So I'm going to Alt drag a duplicate of this away and just line it up as I do it. And then I'll Alt drag another one of these down here. And of course, if I was on a Mac, that would be Option drag. I'm just going to line this up perfectly underneath and all of a sudden you can see that the result this time is very different. You can see that there's a visible seam down here. These waves don't line up. They don't look like a seamless shape. And here these waves don't line up. You can see that they're cut off. So while this element here is filled with a seamless repeating pattern, it itself is not a seamless repeat. So if you were selling this, somebody wouldn't be able to, for example, put this up on spoon flour and make a wonderful piece of fabric because there would be lines every time the pattern element needed to be repeated because it's not seamless, because the shape that needs to go over here is not in this area of the design. But over here, very different story. We need a little pointy bit here. This is the pointy bit. Up here, we need the top of this shape. Well, here it is down here. And across here, we need an entire wave. Well, here it is on this side of the design. So this is a seamless repeating pattern swatch. It doesn't look nearly as interesting as this one over here, but if you want to make a really nice wave pattern fabric on spoon flour, for example, and you might want to make a fat quarter or you may want to make 100 yards of fabric, this is the only one that's going to work properly. This one is not going to work. It's not a seamless repeat although it is made up of a seamless repeat because what I did was I put a seamless repeating pattern, this swatch here, I put it in this shape and it repeated and made a seamless result. 
So that begs the question of what if I want to give somebody something sort of that looks a bit like this, but that is itself a seamless repeating pattern. It's a little bit tricky. Let's go and see how we might do it. I'm going to select over what is a seamless repeating pattern. I'm going to look at its dimensions and we've got all sorts of problems here because its dimensions are not whole numbers. But you know what? We can probably stretch it a little bit to make that. So it is 273 point whatever and 365 point whatever. Well, let me make it 270 here and let me make this 365. So I've resized it very slightly and you won't see that amount of resizing in the actual design. It's going to still be a perfect seamless repeating pattern. It's just going to be slightly different dimensions to this one, but such a small change that you're not going to notice it. But this is what's important. It's width and height are whole values, 270 and 365. So having worked out that particular measurement, I'm going to drop this entire swatch back in the swatches palette so that it can be used as a seamless repeating pattern swatch. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it up into here. Now I'm going to just delete this. The next thing I need to do is some mathematics. So let me go and get a calculator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the width of that piece, which was 270, and I'm going to multiply it by four because that will give me a nice size piece of art. So I'll just multiply it by four. And the result is 1080. So I'm writing that down. So I'm going to clear everything and I'm going to type in my 365. And because the height is bigger than the width, I'll just multiply this by three. It doesn't matter what I multiply these by, but I want something that is almost square and this is nearly square. So that's a good set of values to use. 1095. Next up, I'm going to make a rectangle that is those exact values. So it's going to be 1080 by 1095. Let me just get rid of this shape here because we don't need it any longer. I'll just zoom out a little bit. Let me just make my artboard a bit bigger. So it's going to be a little bit easier for us to see exactly what's going on here. So now I have my shape, which if I click on it, I can read its values up here. Its width is 1080 and its height is 1095. I'm going to fill it with my pattern swatch. So I'll just go and grab my pattern swatch. Now, because we've filled this up with four versions of the pattern swatch across and three down, because that's the size that we made it, this element itself will be a seamless repeating pattern. And we can prove that. I'm going to select this shape and I'm going to Alt or Option drag a duplicate away and I'm going to line it up perfectly to this size of the shape. And I'm going to go and get another copy and I'm going to Alt or Option drag it and just drop it down here at the very base of this shape. And when I do that, you're going to see that we've created this sort of seamless design. In fact, I can go and grab another copy and just drop it in here just to prove that you cannot now see where those boxes are because that original box that we made that was sized perfectly to take four versions of the pattern across and three versions of the pattern down is itself a seamless repeating pattern. But we had to do some fancy footwork to make it a seamless repeating pattern. First of all, we had to go and get our pattern swatch and we had to make sure that it was a physical size that was known, that they were round numbers that we were using. And then I did a mental calculation. I wanted a sort of square document. So I thought, okay, if I put four of these across and three of these down, it's gonna come roughly into a square because of the values that we were using. Then I went and got the calculator and I did the math. I worked out how big this square has to be to take exactly four of my pattern swatches across and three of my pattern swatches down. Then I filled it and then I tested it. And that's the only way that you can create a larger seamless repeating pattern. It looks a little bit better, but in fact, it is the exact same result as using this pattern swatch here. But if you're more comfortable selling something like this, for example, than selling something like this, if you want this to be a repeat, you have to design it to be a repeat. And you may not be able to easily fudge it to a specific size. I've approximated 1080 by 1095. It's almost square, but if I wanted it to be square, then I would have to do some additional mathematics 
graphics to actually scale this down a little bit so I could exactly fit say four of these across and three of these down in a square area. So I hope that this has helped you understand why sometimes something that you think should be a repeat because it's filled with a repeat in fact is not. In fact most of the time if you just fill any random shape with a repeating pattern it's not going to be a repeat. You'd have to be really really lucky for it to be a repeat or you have to go and make it a repeat yourself by doing the mathematics and setting it up to be a shape that itself will repeat. I hope that this video has helped clarify this concept of repeating patterns. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments area below and I'll do my very best to help because I know that this is a really complex topic and until it's sort of the light bulb goes on, it can be really, really confusing to understand. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button so that you subscribe and will be notified when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.